setting up this business, obviously you needed tools, you needed, like you say, cash flow. Did you have to save that money yourself? Did you approach a bank, an institution? Do you have somebody who is backing you up um, when it comes to that technical part of the business? Um, from a um, startup capital point of view, um, I was fortunate enough to have done um, uh, consulting abroad. Mm -hmm. So I had a bit of a head start of having um, a couple of notes in the pocket. But I need to be very grateful for other development organizations around me and building alliances mm -hmm. where the Environment and Energy Partnership for Southeast and East Africa um, applied a grant for and they promote um, renewable um, uh, projects uh, in the renewable energy space. Mm -hmm. And then we've worked with a small enterprise development agency um, and the Department of Agriculture to help us with initiatives where they possibly can. So some of the entrepreneurs that we work with, um, CEDA support them um, as cooperatives too. Um, so, you know, it's like, uh, not everything is quantified in money. Um, you know, service input for people that can help you train up people, especially where you're not skilled in the area, counts for quite a lot. So I can assume that you, having business relationships, building those relationships was key to you starting this business and it would be key for any other business person, um, in your opinion. Absolutely, if you, if you don't have credibility in the market space, where all your stakeholders know what you are, what your business value is, and um, you know, what the end result of your business is gonna be, not only for people, but do you have a climate impact? Um, what's your socioeconomic impact of your business? Once you've got everybody on board, it makes life so much easier because people start talking about you. Um, and that reduces your marketing expenditure to, gov, um, to spend because word of mouth is way more credible um, than writing something about yourself on a piece of paper and expecting somebody um, to accept it. Even if you post it on Facebook to say I'm wonderful, it's much better um, when a third party can verify um, that you're actually credible and you provide value for service. What would you advise small business people to look out for? First two years, what have you experienced? Which is good and bad. Um, things that we want to celebrate as well? I, I think um, a lot of the mistakes I've actually made, if I talk about my mistakes, people yes. can make their own <laughs> judgments. But my mistakes has really been around um, taking things on where I could not see the end result. Mm -hmm. So if you can visualize the end result, you can work towards something. If you've got an idea that's a pie in the sky that you think is going to be around about something, that's where the majority of my failures have been. Um, and that trickles down to um, the product that you're selling, the people you're selling to, and how you're going to sell it to the people, and then the people supporting you. Mm -hmm. um, and once you've got that right, and I see maybe you're going to be one of my five-star sales ladies, um, I'm going to make you visualize what the end result's going to be in remuneration, mm -hmm. how the people's going to treat you, um, and what your value is going to be, what you're going to feel like. Um, going on our business journey. And once you get that right, I think it makes life a little bit easier. So the majority of our failures was actually um, probably partly to my um, result, not seeing um, the, the end result c uh, quick enough and visual visualizing it beforehand. If I'd done that, it would have been, uh, we probably would have been a bit further down <laughs> the road. <laughs> There's young people out there who want to become business people entrepreneurs who just don't know where to start. What are the top 10 things that you'd say to them? This is a tick list that before you approach anybody, make sure that you've got these basics in line. Um, make sure you've done your homework on the person that you're gonna um, go and meet. Mm -hmm. um, technically, you ca cannot fail. So before you walk in and approach anybody, your product needs to be technically very sound or close to very sound. Um, and then you need to, you can't just go and sell a product, you need to be able to show people how that is going to turn into a monetary value. Mm -hmm. So once you've got it turned into a monetary value, you need to show how the system is going to extract that monetary value because you now want money from an investor. If you can assure an investor um, with a reasonable assurance that this is the process and it's a good product and hopefully the product's been tested, then your chance for um, success is so much greater. Okay, so if I cover those, I should be, most people will listen to me. Yeah, you, well you've covered the basis of um, being able to close on a sale, because it's only once you've closed on a sale and you've got money in your bank account, 
um, that it, um, th that your business is actually working. Up to that point, um, it's a great fight um, getting to a positive cash flow. How easy was it to ensure that statutorily your organization was aligned? Um, so your, your, the little things that people us usually complain about, they don't know where you're supposed to go for UIF registrations, for example. Um, CIPRO, how easy was CIPRO when you needed stuff from them? Um, you, you've worked with the seeders, I'm, I'm assuming those are the relationships you cultivated, but how easy was it to, to, to be able to talk to them and approach them to get them to help you? Okay, from a statutory point of view, setting up companies is actually not all that difficult. Mm -hmm. um, dealing with um, CIPRO um, is a bit difficult, especially if you want to do changes to, um, to your company. But as, um, as a, a general engagement, it's actually not that difficult. When you start doing um, trademark registrations, um, there is a little bit of backlog um, around it. So you have to grin and bear and make sure you get it through. Um, but the majority of the work is not that difficult. You just need to be diligent to follow it through. Mm. Um, unfortunately, government does not move as fast as somebody in private enterprise. Everybody gets paid salaries on that side. And nobody's going to pay you at the end of the month if you haven't delivered. So, you know, you do, there is a level of frustration, but if you just bear in mind that it is a process and make sure that you, um, you know, as part of your routine, make sure you've got a tick list and tick it off once it's done. Um, it is a journey to take it through. Um, and then the relationship with the support organisations, um, um, the like CEDA and the Department of Agriculture, mm -hmm. generally those organisations want to see that there is traction on the ground first before they engage. They get so many approaches. So if you can just do something small, something credible, um, and actually then invite them to showcase what you're actually doing, um, your level of uh, support will be increased. Obviously, if, um, especially for organizations like CEDA, they, they've got a finite budget mm -hmm. and you need to make sure that you fit within their budget cycle as well. So that, it is very frustrating, but that's part of the financial planning process and building yourself, um, um, working at your own um, credibility to start attracting um, the support, support like that. that.